This is the first of three lessons devoted to the issue of human rights violations. In this class, we will cover three points, terminological precisions, human rights obligations, and the transgressor. The expression human rights violations is of common use, yet it is not strictly accurate. It is actually a kind of shorthand for transgression or violation of the obligations international human rights law imposes on states. Naturally, this academically more accurate sentence is far too long, yet it raises two relevant questions. A, what are the obligations international human rights law imposes on states? And B, can only states violate human rights? International human rights treaties impose on states two main obligations, to respect and to ensure. The obligation to respect means that the state, in practice the state agents, must refrain from doing anything which affects the value being protected. These are negative obligations, not to kill, not to torture, not to arbitrarily imprison, not to censor, not to arbitrarily discriminate, etc. The obligation to ensure is positive. It means taking all necessary actions to guarantee that the values that human rights law intends to protect are indeed safeguarded. Examples of such actions are adopting laws and administrative measures, training the state agents in charge of law enforcement, investigating and bringing to justice cases of human rights violations so as to deter their recurrence, etc. The obligation to ensure does not demand a result, but a behavior. It demands a bona fide, diligent action or actions, but it may be complied with even if the intended result was not achieved. For instance, the investigation of a state crime, however scrupulous, may not lead to the prosecution, or else the eventual prosecution may not end in the conviction of the accused person. On the contrary, the obligation to respect presupposes a result that the value in question is not violated. In addition to these two obligations, many economic, social and cultural rights impose on states the obligation to progressively accomplish an intended goal, be it universal elementary education, adequate health attention for all, or other such public policy objective. Further, some treaties oblige states to promote certain values, for instance, to overcome stereotypes concerning women. This kind of obligation may be seen as a separate, distinct one. It may also be seen as one more dimension of the obligation to ensure. Some human rights treaties impose on states also the obligation to cooperate with intergovernmental human rights bodies. Traditionally, it has been proposed that civil and political rights imply mainly negative obligations, that is, not to kill, not to torture, etc. Therefore, their fulfillment would not require state expenditures. On the contrary, economic, social and cultural rights would entail mainly positive obligations for which it is necessary to allocate state economic resources. For many years now, most academics have come to reject this distinction as simplistic. Among other arguments, they point out at the fact that the protection of civil rights also implies considerable state expense. For instance, it is necessary to pay for a well-endowed judiciary, for police bodies and for public entities to organize and supervise 
electoral rolls and public elections. Are only states capable of human rights violations? Is it just the shepherd who may attack the sheep or are there also wolves stalking it? Since the Peace of Westphalia in 1648, the only actors of international law were states. Individuals were considered just as objects of protection and not as legal subjects capable of acting in international law. After World War II, many non-state actors have been recognized as international players, non-governmental organizations, transnational corporations, armed groups, transnational criminal and terrorist organizations, and even plain individuals. We have seen that under the obligation to ensure, states may be liable not only for what they do, but also for not taking measures aimed at preventing, investigating, punishing, or redressing human rights violations. Yet, the question remains, may other subjects in international relations today be liable for human rights violations? Let's examine four possible categories. The actions and omissions of these new subjects of international law can have great impact on particular human rights areas, such as labor rights, the rights of the child, indigenous people's rights, and environmental law. This has led to efforts to regulate the conduct of transnational corporations. For instance, the OECD Guidance for Multinational Enterprises of 1976, the UN norms on the responsibilities of transnational corporations and other business enterprises with regard to human rights of 2003, and the UN Guiding Principles of Business and Human Rights of 2011. Strictly speaking, to comply or not with humanitarian law is not the same as to comply or not with human rights law, since these are two different systems under international law. However, they both safeguard the same fundamental principles, such as human rights dignity and the right to life and personal security of the innocent. Non-state groups waging internal armed conflicts are often accused in practice of violating human rights. This might not be academically accurate, but in practice it would seem pedantic and callous to belabor this point. As we have seen before, the momentum of the state-led human rights movement after World War II cooled down in the 1950s. A decade later, that is, starting in the 1960s, non-governmental organizations or NGOs have spurred international human rights to acquire political legitimacy and a legal status worldwide. In 2005, several NGOs, such as Amnesty International, Greenpeace and Oxfam, signed the International Non-Governmental Organizations Accountability Charter, which is not a legally binding document. This charter sets forth professional criteria for NGOs to become more accountable. Persons holding a position of power in the realm of the family may be said to have a degree of control of that circumscribed sphere in a way similar to that of a state. In this regard, some consider them liable for human rights violations, such as intrafamily violence, discrimination, or neglect to provide for basic needs. Please visit our website mockchile.com 
and you are kindly invited to watch the next class of this course.